Fade out one. Fade in three. Pizza Flicks Television Division presents Suspense. chosen a little guest house on the Gulf Coast of Florida because his subject is marine biology. Well, I have to hurry if I'm going to catch that ebb tide. I wish you were coming too. Oh, so do I. Darling, you realize this will be the first time since we've been married we're going to be separated. Yes, and isn't it awful? Mm-hmm. What are you going to do with yourself today? Oh, I think I'll, I'll drive out to the Chipola River Swamp. Oh, what are you going to do there? See if I, lo- I can locate that ivory bill woodpecker that's been reported. I'm going to leave my camera. Oh, in the other room, hanging on the wall behind the armchair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Darling, what happened? It was a, a spider on the, on the strap of my camera. Here, wait here. Bite you any place? No, I, I don't think so. It just brushed my hand. Oh. Well, now, there's no need to get so upset. Even if it hadn't bitten you, it wouldn't have poisoned you. Now, surely you know that. I know that, darling. It, it all goes back to something that happened when I, when I was still at school. A boy slipped one down the back of my neck. I've had a phobia about it ever since. It just paralyzed me. <laughs> you were anything but paralyzed. You know what I mean? They, they scare me to death. Do you want me to stay with you? No, darling, it's all forgotten. You run along and catch your time. Well, goodbye, dear. I'll see you for dinner. What happened? I thought I heard a scream. Oh, it wasn't anything, Mrs. Winnie. A, a spider just brushed my hand, that's all. Where are you off to? I'm going to the Chipola River Swamp. I better hurry. It's a longish drive out there. What's the matter? That's where Professor Marvin and his son were lost. They were traced to the Chipola swamp, but never found. It just swallowed them up. Awful. They were looking for the ivory bill too. Well, it's it's an unfortunate coincidence, Mrs. Winnie, but I'm afraid that's all it is. If the ivory bill's there, I'm going to photograph it. Don't ever lose sight of your car. Those trails look so much alike. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'll be back on time for dinner. <laughs> Nevertheless, my sense of direction deserted me for once. I was careless. I heard the ivory bill calling, but it was always just a few yards ahead. By sundown, I had to acknowledge to myself that I was lost. I realized I'd been walking in circles for hours. By the time darkness had set in, I was utterly exhausted and a little scared.
I'm so glad somebody's here. I, I'm, I'm Muriel Torrey, Mrs. Torrey. I'm afraid I'm hopelessly lost. Oh, please do come in. Thank you. Follow me. What an amazingly civilized place to find in the middle of a jungle. I've lived in this cabin for almost 11 years. My name is Entwistle, Dr. Roger Entwistle. Do you have a telephone? I'd like to call my husband to come and fetch me. Oh, I'm sorry I have no telephone. Please sit down. I I'll give you something to drink. Is there anything special that you'd like? Well, anything but welcome. I can see you've traveled quite a lot, Dr. Entwistle. Oh, yes, yes. I, I was quite an explorer in my day until I came here. Specialized in tropical diseases. I'm a bit of an explorer myself. Matter of fact, that's what's got me into this predicament. I was after the ivory bill. Oh, that elusive laurel eye of the swamps. She's led her others astray. Yes, I, I heard just this morning about about a professor and his son who arrived at her right in this very district and, and disappeared. I feel very fortunate to have found your cabin. I'm equally fortunate, Mrs. Torrey, here. Drink this, it'll make you feel better. Thank you. Aye, that's good. I don't know when I've enjoyed a drink more. Mrs. Torrey, I would like to see you, if you'll permit me. See me? I'm blind, Mrs. Torrey. Oh. And the only way I can tell how people look is if I can touch them. Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I, I didn't oh, you're, realize. You're very beautiful, my dear. I can tell that much. Perfect bone structure. No lines. Tell me, Mrs. Torrey, what is the color of your hair? It's sort of reddish. My eyes are dark blue. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. And, uh, your age? I'm 28. Oh, that's not quite so perfect. you can't see. You, you seem so at ease. It's one other thing puzzles me. Why'd you have your lights on? I always keep a lamp burning in case someone such as yourself should lose his way. You, you surely don't live here alone. Well, most of the time. I have an Indian servant who comes in each morning to help me, but he lives ten miles away on the reservation. I wish there was some way we could get word to somebody. No, no, not until morning. So won't you, won't you stay and dine with me? My servant will be along the first thing in the morning, and then he can take you home. Meantime, you can stay the night as my guest. You have no idea what great pleasure that will afford me. Mr. Torrey, what shall I do with your dinner? It's getting cold. Mm, we'll wait a little longer. I must say you take this mighty calmly. If it was me, I'd be out of my wits. Well, my wife has no sense of time. <laughs> She's often late. But she may be lost in that swamp. Well, I'd bet against it. Why don't you call the sheriff? I refuse to get excited, Mrs. Winnie. I know she'll be all right. Well, if you want Sheriff Peterson, his number's on the pad for the telephone. Well... I better be getting on home. Good night, Mr. Torrey. Good night, Mrs. Winnie. Mrs. Torrey, I don't believe you've eaten very much. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but... The food's heavenly, but I'm, I'm really disturbed about my husband. I, I wish there was some way to get word to him. Well, perhaps you'll feel easier if you'll permit me to offer you a dram of what I call my jungle special. It, it, it's a cordial. It, too, will give you a taste of heaven. Well, just a little. A little goes a very long way, my dear. There. 
Okay, I'm quite sure you've never had anything like this before. Well, it, it smells a little peculiar. What is it? Oh, it's a secret poison I discovered in South America. It's very popular with the Peruvians. Aren't you going to have any? No, no, I haven't touched a thing ever since I was stricken with my affliction. It's awfully good. What's in it? Oh, it's a, a secret process. Now, now that you've finished, I'd like to show you my two most priceless treasures, Mrs. Torrey. They're in the room that you'll be occupying. Well, no, I, I don't think... If you don't mind, would you, would you please precede me? It's through, through that door. And then the, the door to the right. I'll, I'll join you in a moment. things on the mantelpiece. Oh, you, you found them, have you? Well, well, they're what I really wanted to show you. They're masks carved out of hollow goods. Do, do you admire my handiwork? You carved them? Oh, yes. Yes. They, they, they were part of the things that I discovered in, in, in South America. I, I was a captive for five years. They're examples of the art of the Hivaro Indians. Of our own Indians were the, the headhunters? Yes, yes, they cut off their enemies' heads and shrink them. They held me captive, as I said, for five years. They forced me to take drugs. My blindness was the result. Well, may I, may I take one out? No, no, no. No, no, no. Because they're really not quite perfect. Those heads that are inside should really have their lips sewn up. Well, how did you get them out of the country? Did, did the natives give them to you? Oh, no. No, I didn't. I studied the natives' formula for shrinking when I was their captive. I made these myself. What? Yes, their local produce, as it were. You see, I always wanted to have a complete family. So you see, now I have a father, and I have a son. But to make the family complete, there should be a mother. And now, the second act of The Spider, starring Arnold Moss and Olive Deering. Sheriff Peterson's office. <laughs> Sheriff Peterson talking. Oh, hello, Sheriff. This is Robert Torrey speaking. I'm staying up at uh, Mrs. Uh, Winnie's at Driftwood Springs. I'm terribly sorry to disturb you at this late hour, but I'm extremely worried about my wife. She went into Jipola Swamp early this morning and she hasn't returned and I'm beginning to think, well, perhaps she's lost. Well, that very readily might be. That's a pretty treacherous spot. Yes, but wouldn't it be possible to organize a search party of some sort? It's a pretty black night, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll drive over with you and see if we can't locate the car. Oh, well, thank you, Sheriff. I'll be waiting here for you. Of 
course, strictly speaking, you should be a little older, my dear. The young son was nearly 15 years old, but a collector has to take what the gods offer. How, how, how did you get the natives to give you the secret formula? I didn't. I didn't. No one but the witch doctors were allowed to touch the pots in which they placed the heads. As I told you, they caught me spying on them. That's why this happened. How awful. Oh, I don't know. To be the one white man in the world who has my special talent that makes me unique amongst my fellow men. I... I feel a little heady. Must, must be that liqueur. Well, the process is, is really quite simple. It's something like trepanning in, in modern surgery. To begin with, you have to remove the entire skull, and then you fill up the cavity with sand. Then you have to sew up the scalp. I see. Young Marvin here was my first effort. Took half the time of his father. Yes, yes. The, the professor's features were much less pliable. Young... Young Marvin? Professor? Yes, yes, you mentioned that they'd vanished. What... What happened to the bodies? These swamps, Mrs. Torrey, are full of alligators. Isn't it awfully hot in here? Well, perhaps you'd care to open a window. Yes, I, I think I will. I... I can't move. It's... That's exactly as it should be. Six minutes and 35 seconds. What have you given me? One of the most interesting of the Hivaro drugs. I... I... It's no use. It's no use you've lost your powers of speech. They're impotent now, and all that remains now is to count the seconds until the effect of the drug has reached its full climax. That should take exactly five minutes. Look, Sheriff, the dog's picked up the scent again. Yeah, lead this way. Look here, moss is all trampled down. I reckon she sat on this log the rest of my... Probably is mighty tired, too. I figure it's five miles back to where we left that car. Well, let's get going. Oh, the dog seems to want to go that way. Five minutes exactly. Can you talk to me, my dear? Can you move? I thought not. Well, now I leave you to your ultimate thoughts. I have a little laboratory out in s outside the back of the house. I may be gone for a little while. It takes a certain time for me to get the stones hot that are used for shrinking the features. Anything not to go to sleep. And the 
just keep my eyes moving, looking. What's that? Dust. Cobwebs. <laughs> no. You've fallen one of these quagmires. The old doctor is a maniac. He tried to murder me. Murder you, darling? Do you know what you're saying? I do, I do. He gave me a drink. It paralyzed me. Well, you came out under your own steam. That's because of the spider. What spider? The spider's paralyzed with fear, Sheriff. This one seems to put her in some sort of shock. Come on, we've got to get her to the car. Help me as quickly as you can. Come on. Father, believe me. He murdered Professor Marvin and his surroundings. He got that shrink on the head upstairs. We know about those heads. He brought them back from Peru. Now, we don't have headhunters in Florida. Let me help you to the car, man. Go ahead, darling. I've got to go in and at least thank the old fellow for getting a sanctuary. Bob! Bob! Hey, wait. Bob, he must... Breathe! Chandler Marvin. Chandler Marvin Jr. How do you believe me? You say he's out in his shack? Well, I'll go get him. <laughs> 